Howdy folks, Brian Cusco here at Triple B. You might be asking yourself, why is he wearing a tie? This tie right here. We'll get to that. But let's face it, the rarity of any particular morph plays a huge factor in determining its market value. It's a very simple case of supply and demand. I don't see any problem with it. I think the problem comes when that's all people see is the dollar signs because these are living and breathing creatures that deserve the respect that all living things do. On that same coin, I've started off with some less commonly produced or newer morphs because I want to get closer to achieving my goal of working with snakes as a way to support myself. Because this is what I love to do anyway. And who in their right minds doesn't want to be able to support themselves working on projects that they love. Now, if I acquire the capital that I'm hoping to in my first season, I'm gonna be working on breeding projects that utilize some of the more common morphs. And why? Two reasons. One, I think that there are many, many beautiful snakes that come from pairing these original morphs. And to me, a ball python is like a sunset. You can see one every day for the rest of your life, but never get tired of seeing it. They're just that beautiful, man. And uh, two, I want to be able to provide pets for people that aren't looking to spend thousands of dollars on an investment animal. Turning people onto snakes and inspiring new keepers to take up the hobby is one of my passions as a snake guy. And I want that opportunity to be available to everyone, regardless of income. Because it doesn't really take much money to keep a snake. The initial investment for an enclosure and a thermostat, the upkeep of a few dollars a week for food and substrate, and a couple hundred tucked away in case of a potential vet visit. Now that being said, I'm wearing this monkey suit today because from this point forward in the video, I'm gonna leave my love for snakes on the shelf and look at it from a strictly business standpoint. And look at the way you dress. Is there really such a thing as an investment ball python? Or is that just a lame attempt at marketing? We're gonna hit the books today. I've been hitting the books really hard lately. I'm gonna crunch some numbers for you and answer that question. You're watching Triple B TV. Now, before we get started, I just want to say that there's a short chain of events that have led me to this video. As many of you might know, I was recently in a car accident that put me temporarily out of work, but it also inspired me to make Triple B an officially licensed business. Now I'm taking an in-depth look at if I could realistically do what I love for a living. And as a byproduct, you're going to learn if you can be successful too. Okay, let's get started. Okay, let's say you've got $6,000 sitting in a savings account, or you got a nice tax return, or whatever the case may be. You can keep that money in your savings account or invest that tax return into a money market account. And some would say that's a good investment. And I agree, it's always a good idea to have money in savings. Well, let's run the numbers on that though. The highest yielding money market account I could find recently was boasting an APY or annual percentage yield of 1.3%. So let's take 1.3% of $6,078. Now let's run that for about three years. Three years is about the same amount of time that you could raise up a female ball python, produce her first clutch, and sell the babies. So 78 times three, it's 234. Now you've made a profit of 3.9% of your initial investment. Now let's take a look at investing that same money into ball pythons. I've heard that it's a good idea to invest as much into your males as your females. And let's say that one male can successfully produce clutches with about five females in a season. So you put 2,000 into a powerhouse male like this little dude right here. You put another 2,000 into your females. I just looked on Morph Market and saw leopard het clowns going for about $400. So you can get five het clown females with one incomplete dominant gene Let's say leopard, pastel, an enchi, a lesser, a spot nose, all 100% het clown. Now you're gonna to need to house and feed those snakes and raise them up for breeding. So you get a Herbstat 2, $200, and a Freedom Breeder Reptile 1010 rack, just like this one right here, thousand bucks. I know there are other less expensive rack options out there, but we're talking about an investment here. 
Freedom Breeder racks are virtually indestructible and last a lifetime. I'll be passing this rack down to my grandchildren. I believe in them so much that I contacted the guys at Freedom Breeder and worked out a deal with them. If you call them up and mention that you watched this video, they will give you 10% off of a Reptile 1010 rack just like this one here. So we got the housing down. Now we need to feed. If you feed like I do, you need a medium rat for each female every two weeks and a weaned for this boy right here. So you can get a medium frozen thawed for about 150 from places like Rodent Pro or Lane Labs and a weaned rat for a dollar. So that's 950 every two weeks to feed. Over the course of three years, you're looking at $740. So that's about 6K right there, invested. All you have to do is raise up your snakes and breed them. If you've made it this far in the video, I assume you already have a passion for snakes and you're doing all the research you need to to make that whole process a breeze. So a first time female will lay on average, what? Three to six eggs for a first clutch. Let's take the conservative route and say that you get four eggs from your five females each. That's 20 eggs. And going by conservative odds, five of those snakes will either be visual leopard clowns, lesser clowns, or something like that. Five visual clown combos. Ten of your snakes are going to be visual clowns. And then the other five are going to be 100% het clown. So because of your powerhouse male right here, chances are you'll have better odds than that. But again, we're looking at the outcome very conservatively. Now I chose clown for a hypothetical situation here for a few reasons. One clown is hands down my favorite morph. I just think the snakes and combos that it creates are incredible. Two, they have dropped from their original price as all morphs do when they've become more widely available, but they have been holding pretty steady for the past couple years. I was just chatting with Garrick DeMeyer from Royal Constrictor Designs yesterday, and he said that he's been selling males for 350 and females for five to 600 consistently for at least the past couple years. And finally, reason number three, they're a recessive trait, which makes it even more likely that they will maintain their value going forward. So, your eggs hatch. You got five that you can sell for a thousand a piece. You got 10 that you can sell for 600. And you've got five, again, that you can sell at about 300. Five at a thousand, five thousand dollars. 10 at 600, six thousand dollars five at three hundred fifteen hundred dollars that is a grand total of twelve thousand five hundred dollars that's over a hundred percent of your initial investment in profit let's compare these two investments now on a line graph your money market here is the blue line and over the course of three years you'll gradually grow and eventually at three years end end up with a profit of two hundred and thirty four dollars now with the ball pythons here represented by the red line, you're not making anything for those first two and a half years, but then right when you start hatching eggs and selling babies, you're going to skyrocket up the profit of about $6,500. Now that was taking the conservative route. Now I know I didn't mention things like electricity or an incubator or things like that, and sure there's a chance that a female will take longer to grow than expected, or heaven forbid you lose a snake, and there's always going to be risk involved with anything worth doing though. Now, although my story isn't bulletproof, you could actually hit on three Firefly Leopard Clowns in one clutch and clear your investment plus profit in one foul swoop. The point is, you won't find many other things out there that will offer this kind of return to investment legally. And if you already love working with ball pythons, well this is a win-win situation no matter how you slice it. Are you willing to invest in yourself? Because that's what this really is. That bank is going to take your money and make high risk investments with it and give you the measly 1.3% in return in the best case scenario. Or if you believe in yourself and your abilities, you can make your rent doing what makes you happy. I believe in you. I really do. So more than, more than ever on this episode, I want to hear your thoughts. Do you think I'm crazy? That's a given. But I really, I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear their thoughts. I want to hear everyone's thoughts. Make sure to get this video around. Share it, like it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're about to start doing giveaways again, and I've got some new t-shirts being printed as we speak that I'll be giving away to our subscribers for free. So next week, we'll be making that mite prevention and eradication video that I talked about in the last episode. But until then, you've been watching Triple B TV. Y'all take care. Get it rolling.
get it rolling. Make it happen. Make it happen. Don't be a fool now, Jimmy. Come on now. Get up in there. Snoring, snoring. Uh, 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 uh. Here we got to go. We're going to roll up a day. Oh, say, oh, what you got to know. All righty then. Selling snakes, investment ball pythons.